Good morning, gang. Happy Monday. Yeah, I know. What's so happy about a Monday, right? You see this little sweetie here? This is my Isabella. She's being a cuddle bug with me to make up for last night when she did this to me. And she gave me other scratches in other areas. She was being extra rammy, to say the least. But she's my baby, and I love her. And I can't stay mad at a cute little kitty face like this. If anybody's got any suggestions, I think she, I'm not sure what's what's up, but she, she does this quite a bit where she thinks that mommy is a chew toy. But she was doing that especially at night, last night. But other than that, she's my doll baby. And she has her little cuddle bug moments. I think this is her way of saying she's sorry. Today I was reading out of Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35, and I, I would I, I invite you to read it. It's about two of Jesus' followers, one's named Cleopas, and they're both on the road to Emmaus from Jerusalem. It's been three days since Christ's death, burial, and now his resurrection. And they're talking about everything. They just can't make sense of anything. And they're really, they're really sad. I think they felt like they needed to talk things through with each other. Because it was, it was traumatic what had happened. And while they're talking along the road, Jesus comes along. The risen Savior comes along, but they don't recognize him. It says in scripture, their eyes were holding that they should not recognize him. Another uh, translation I read says, but God, God, uh, God didn't have them recognize him to that effect. And I, I thought that was interesting. So Jesus comes along, he's a stranger to them. And he asks them, you know, what are you guys talking about? Why are you guys so sad? Why, what's, what's with your conversation? You know, what happened? And they're like, you know, pretty much their response was like, are, are you under, have you been living under a rock? You know, you, you have, are you a stranger in, in, in Israel and in Jerusalem and you, you haven't, you didn't hear what happened over the last few days? And he's like, no, what happened? You know, what things? And they share with him about Jesus and who he was, who they, who they believed he was especially. They referred to him as a mighty prophet. And they said the chief priests, they held a kangaroo court and they turned him over to Pilate and the Roman government and they crucified him. They killed him. They murdered him. And they said, well, on top of all that, it's been three days and we've had reports from people saying he's alive. His body's gone from the tomb. We know that, but we don't know any more. And Jesus responds, and he does this in a, I think, in a manner that's not putting anybody down. He's not being mean. He's like, you guys are really foolish. He's like, you don't, you don't understand. Let, let me help you understand. And he shares with them from the scriptures how Christ Jesus, the Messiah, was supposed to suffer and die for our sins. He was our sinless lamb, the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And that this, everything that Christ went through was necessary to redeem us from sin, to cleanse us from sin, so that we could be set free from it, and that we could have eternal life in heaven with him when we, by, when we accept him as our Savior. So he's sharing all of this with them. And they finally get to Emmaus. And Jesus is making like he's going to keep on going. But they're like, no, please have dinner with us. Have dinner with us. It's getting late. Spend the night with us. So he agrees to, and while they're sitting there about ready to have dinner, he breaks the bread and blesses it. And right at that moment when he's doing that, that's when they recognize him. And at that moment when they recognize him, Jesus vanishes out of their sight. And the one thing that they stated in the midst of all of this was, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, in other words, they're like, didn't, wasn't what he was saying making some sense? Didn't that really get to us? Did, did, didn't it, 
when it says, did not our heart burn within us, in other words, didn't, didn't, it was conviction. And the Holy Spirit just s setting their hearts on fire with what Christ was saying and impressing it on them and getting them to understand, getting them to see who Jesus really was. And out of joy, they ran and told, you know, went back to Jerusalem and told everybody. And while they were there, before they even got to say anything, they found out that Jesus appeared to Peter. And then while they were trying to say what happened with them, Christ appears. And Christ further shares with everybody from the scriptures just why he had to be there, why he had to suffer and die, that it was necessary to redeem us from sin. And, you know, it really reminds me of how I think we take Christ for granted. We take so many things for granted in our Christian walk. And how we... In our taking things for granted, we don't we, we, we fail to see the blessings he gives us. We fail to see the things that he does for us. I don't know how else to describe it. But when, there's so many things that I've been learning this week, this past weekend especially. I'm learning about Mary Magdalene, the woman that did you know never forgot. The woman whose loyalty to the Lord wasn't based on political motivations, but it was based out of a genuine love for her Savior. And I learned through all of this that when we're facing hardships, obstacles, anything within life that Satan throws at us to try to cause us to be in despair and to give up, to remember what our Savior did for us on the cross, that awful price he paid, but also to remember, too, that he's our risen Savior, that he's conquered sin and death. And the biggest prayer I had today was, I asked the Lord to help me to see him, my risen Savior, in every aspect, aspect, situation, and event that takes place in my life. I asked him to help me to see him, especially in the things that Ricky and I are going through right now, the physical pain that we are experiencing, the recent visit to patient first that Ricky had, that Ricky did because, and, and what happened to him on Friday because he wasn't feeling well. And now we know he's got vertigo and we need to look into that a little more. But I also asked the Lord to help me to see him through all the difficult and hard times and to know that he's never leaving us or forsaking us that he'll never leave me or forsake me and I pray that you'll see him in that too that he will never leave you or forsake you too my prayer is most of all that you will truly come to know him as your savior to know the risen savior so intimately please accept him as savior today before it's too late he is alive. He's not dead. He's alive and roaring like a lion, as the song from Newsboy says. And I pray that you'll know him as I know him, as Savior and Lord, as my living Redeemer. And you can see here, Isabel is still in my arms. I think she's fallen asleep. But my prayer for all of you is that you will come to trust Christ as Savior if you don't know him yet. And if you do know him as Savior and you're going through any situation, that you know that the risen Savior is there for you, that he will never leave you or forsake you. I've got to get going now. We have a busy day today. But know that Christ truly cares about you. And he lives. Bye for now.